Okay, and I I don't have an echo on my end. Oh, so fabulous. We're good. All yeah. right, so quick catch up YouTube. Hello, hello. We are doing Masterclass 07. I have my special guest, Samantha Pike, on here because we're also doing an Instagram IGTV live on this Masterclass. Samantha is from our Manif Manifestation Journey podcast. Am I saying that right? Yeah, our Manifestation Journey. Yay, so you won't be able to hear her, but you'll be able to... I'm sorry, you won't be able to see her, but you'll be able to hear her. And I'm turning the volume up all the way. And everyone on IGTV, thank you for your patience. Here we go. Can you hear me okay with the phone position like this? Yes. Awesome. Okay, cool. So this topic today is um, a bit sensitive. It's uh, really crucial, but we're going to be really gentle in our approach because it can, um, you know, this is something that's hurt a lot of people and we want to like open up the conversation for maybe some healing to take place or just a better understanding from both sides. So this topic is fit shaming and fat shaming and how that relates to fitness. And uh, what we want to go over today is number one, what are those two things? What are those concepts? How did they come to be? How did they originate? We have some theories. Um, who do they affect and how will they affect these folks? And what ways will it, you know, maybe get in the way of us having healthy bodies, healthy relationships with others, and um, a healthy self-image? Yeah. yeah. Did I cover the, all the main areas? I, I think you did great. I'm so excited. I just have to say first, like, <laughs> wildly honored to be a part of this. Um... I feel like I'm going to be learning so much in this myself. Like I'm here to contribute, but I'm also feel like such a student in this world and I'm very eager to learn. So thank you for having me. Oh, thank you so much, Sam. And I feel the same way. I really, really do. I think, I mean, this, this started because you and I had a conversation a long time ago and mm -hmm my my brain just like grew that day from you <laughs> i feel like you had a term for it i didn't even ha i didn't even have a term for it yeah that's right this was like a conversation from a while ago so, yeah so yeah. i feel like terminology these days like technology is so fast like things in our culture are just happening at such lightning speed that uh -huh. um what wasn't really a term six months ago is now totally a thing and all the papers are writing about it and so on and so on. It's tagging, trending, whatever. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's so easy to, I mean, I haven't done it yet, but like to create a hashtag that just goes viral, right? Like it's so easy to come up with these terms to make them explode. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Well, before we really, really dive in, I want to give my quick dis disclaimer. Um, because I think that's important. Um, first of all, neither one of us are doctors or licensed psychologists. So the information we provide today is for info resources only, and it's not to be taken as a diagnosis or medical treatment for, of any kind. Um, please consult with your physician before starting an exercise or nutrition regimen and or prior to making any major healthcare decisions or changes um, regarding any type of specific medical condition. Um, also. I just take what we share today and gauge it against your own system. You know, throw out what doesn't work for you and then what is resonant, you can, you know, keep with you and, and kind of like feel into. Um, definitely practice self-compassion with this topic. Definitely, definitely with this topic. And, um, you know, in doing so, this is how you practice emotional responsibility. I tell every member of the L3 Method, my company, this when we hop on any type of group or one-on-one -on -one coaching call. Um, if this lands for you, utilize it. If not, throw it out. This is consensual coaching. Be really, really gentle with yourself and also know that like your no and your yes is always honored and how that happens here, even though you're kind of the listener in this scenario is, yeah, you can say no to any, any like, um, just idea that we have and just say, no, that, that doesn't really work in my experience. That's always like within your right. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Thank you for saying that because I obviously I too want to iterate like I'm not an expert in this field. Like I, I am just an observer um, with my own experience. So, you know, I, I'm here to share, but again, I'm not an expert. Totally. Yeah. I don't, I don't feel I'm an expert in this area. Um, I feel like I'm an expert in fitness, but I don't feel like I'm an expert in fit shaming or fat shaming by any stretch. I feel like this is a really like a relatively new like pair of topics. So who really yeah. can be an expert in this yet? Um, yeah. the last thing I'll say with the disclaimer is just DM us. Well, I have, you have my full permission, Sam, you can let me know, like DM one of us or both of us. If something cuts deep, like if, if something we're not here to like blow something up and then just walk away and be like, Oh wow, that hurts. That was triggering. And then that's it. Um, we can absolutely continue the, the conversation like in the DMs privately if you really want to like go over something that hit you a certain way. So yeah, yeah I'm here for that too. I'd be happy to answer anything if anyone has any questions. Cool. You're amazing. Do you want to <laughs> mention anything before we continue about your podcast or all the cool work that you're doing in the world? Uh, yeah. Well, I've never explored this topic on the podcast before. Um, maybe because it is, it feels really hard to talk about. I don't know. Um, but so like our podcast is, I'll just do a little quick thing. I live with my sister. I've lived with her for 10 years and we live together with our husbands and her two children. And a couple of years ago, we decided to document our play with the law of attraction and really design and create our own lives. Um, so instead of kind of, uh, just going with the flow of life and um, being, we just started to look at our lives and say, Hey, like, how do we actually want to live and what, how can we create our own lives? So this topic, so I feel like is so related to the designing of your life. And um, yeah, so we have a podcast that you can listen to our journey, which is super cool because we literally documented it from day one of, Hey, let's redesign our lives. Two years later, we're, we've been uh, doing the podcast, so you can literally listen to our evolution mm -hmm. and then discover all of the surprises that have happened to us along the way and all the manifestations that have happened. It's really cool. Okay. Obviously, on our manifestation journey, we met Leanne, and I mean, right? I mean, mm -hmm. if you're a part of Leanne's community, you know. So, yeah. yeah, that's a little... You can listen to our podcast you can follow our instagram just kind of follow along our journey and we're really trying to bring as many people along with us as possible not only to observe us but to like feel inspired and, and really get into this idea of you are the creator of your own life yeah. so cool i love it thank yeah. you for thank you for like filling us in on your podcast and what's it all about and about your life and what that's all about <laughs> Like yeah, so you're welcome. Yeah, so cool. Okay, let's get into this. So what is fit shaming and what is fat shaming? I feel like the latter might be something we're more familiar with um, mm -hmm. because it's unfortunately been around for longer. Um, but fit shaming is a little bit of like a newer topic. And I think we can both agree that we'll both try to stay as neutral on this as possible because the goal is to like build bridges and the goal is to just learn. Um, and the goal is also for me, I'll say to dig up anything systemic within me that I don't want to be a part of me and to look at it and, and to like look at it with love and neutrality and decide, okay, where does this come from? And how can I like, how can I transmute it into something that's actually good for the world instead of, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. So I think we all have some dormant stuff and it's good to look at it. Mm -hmm. So do you want me to share what I think yes. it is? Absolutely. And, or you can, whatever you want, <laughs> whatever you're comfortable with. I can't do it. It's helpful actually to go back to our conversation that we had a couple months ago where I was experiencing and I actually have kind of for some time in my family, I noticed that I, if we are in 
uh, the if we experience people who are thin or who are fit or like who take care of their bodies, I noticed that there were comments that they were. It was almost like a sour grapes um, experience for them. Like they must not be happy. They must be denying themselves happiness in order to look that way, yeah. or. Um, almost like the opposite, the vice versa would be like if somebody who had more curves to their body and was represented as somebody who was sexy, it was like, oh, I'm so glad they represent, they have a curvy person representing somebody who is sexy versus like a fit person who represents something who is, who is sexy. Um, and so like I, watching that, I was like, why are we assuming that they're not happy? Mm. Or like, why are we assuming that they're not, um, why are we making them lesser, uh, lesser, yeah. you know, lesser valued lesser people for being fit? Yeah. And it's such a tricky topic because it's like kind of an ideal, right? So it's, totally how could we be, how could we be shaming an ideal? Like that doesn't really make sense. Like it's such a tricky topic to go, um, to really dive in with people. Um, but really it's just about our judgment on the appearance of how people look and the, uh, the, uh, the meaning we make behind that observation. So whether it's fit shaming or fat shaming, it's, the meaning we make about another person and how that represents, like how that sits with us. Totally. It's not, it's not about the other person, about what it, what is the meaning that you're making by looking at someone's behavior or looking at someone's appearance? What are you making that mean about yourself? Yes, you are so correct. And like you said earlier, like the meaning we're creating is coming from an assumption. And what's that like old silly adage like assuming is making an ass out of you and me or something like yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. But I feel like it applies in this case because whenever we make an assumption, that's all, that's all it is. It's not actually the truth and there's different versions of the truth, right? So you're absolutely correct. When we make an assumption that someone who's fit is miserable based on their physical appearance. And I believe as humans, we can pick up energy. So if someone really looks miserable and they also happen to be fit, then we might be onto something. But if someone's fit and yeah. then we're, we're drawing conclusions like, well, that means they must starve themselves or that means that they spend three hours on the, on the stair climber instead of at home with their family or, or what have you, could that definitely be true? Of course. Has, is truth rooted in, or is that like, rooted in times where that has been true. We've seen that example from certain fit people. And so it gives more fit people like that name. Yeah. But is that true in every case? That's where the assumption comes in. Yeah. And then it's, I would take it, can I take it in the other direction with the fat shaming on that side? Hello? Oh, are you there? Yeah. Did you add, did you add? Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> I'm just saying, is it okay if I take it kind of, sorry, in that other direction? Take it to the other direction. Yeah. So when we look at someone who's curvier or someone who has more weight on their frame and we make an assumption on their, about their, um, lifestyle habits, it's an assumption. We don't know what that person's been through. We don't know why they're the weight that they're at. We don't know why they have the curves that they have. Um, and I think this is really hearkening to old school times when people were being much more ignorant and much more cruel um, than I hope, you know, I hope people are, are moving in a different direction now. But, you know, making assumptions that a person who's overweight is lazy or a person who's overweight just doesn't want it badly enough or a person who's overweight doesn't care about their health, you know, things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or they're um, they're unintelligent, right? I feel like that that must be so hard yeah. to 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 walk around feeling like people think 
I'm not smart because of the way that I look. Yeah. Like it, it goes, it takes it to another level. Like it takes it to, well, and that's what we're saying. It's like the meaning you make, right? Like you're expanding your, and it's just like, a, it's only, this is the thing. All we're, all we're, we're only looking at a physical thing. But then we, we make meaning out of it, expand it into these areas and into these like really unhealthy, poor vibration, speaking from a law of attraction perspective, like these just really low frequency, low vibe places yeah. that aren't doing anybody any good. Not only is it affecting you, but other people as well. And then they're carrying that energy with them too. So yeah, I just obviously these both of these topics are really unhealthy for the the collective yeah. and also for the individual yeah um i have yeah. more thoughts i want to give people like a little bit of structure because we did say or i i mentioned at the beginning that we are going to answer some specific questions and i just sam i love what you wrote down when we prepared for this um for this live so could i actually read off what you wrote yeah. Yay. Thank you. Okay. So Sam, I want to give you full credit. Sam wrote under what is fit shaming? And what is fat shaming? She said, both are essentially the same behavior, making yourself feel superior by holding people inferior based on their appearance in order to defend against a perceived threat to the self. In order to defend yourself from people who question your way of being, you come up with ideas to keep people at a distance. Fit shaming is a great way to keep yourself from feeling bad about yourself. That's like a really interesting take on it. It's much easier to believe that fit people are unhappy, obsessed with the way they look, insecure about their bodies, striving for per uh, perfection, superficial, wealthy snobs, removed from reality, etc., than to acknowledge that feeling that you believe you can't have what you have, what they have. It's easier to not want this way of life when you assume that there's a high cost for to pay for being fit. And the reality may be that you actually do want what they have, but you feel like you can't attain it. So you like put distance and judgment between yourself and your desire. Um, okay, so fat shaming, um, I quote, make again, makes you feel better about yourself. It would be better to hold yourself higher than to be equal to others who exemplify negative ways of being. Common assumptions are that people who have more weight are weak, lazy, unintelligent. To be associated with fat people would mean that you're also weak and lazy and stupid. Um, this is so good. And, and you wrote more stuff here, but maybe we could like expand on some of these things. I also, I want to say that the fat shaming component can be much more insidious than we think. Um, and I say that because hopefully we're, we're like, sorry, I'm getting a little text. Um, hopefully we are going towards like a better future, but it also, we also have to kind of be on the lookout that it, cause it can still take root and we don't, we don't know. Um, can I give some examples in my world? Okay, great. Yeah. I remember, I'm going to just like go off the cuff here. I remember that when I was coming up as a personal trainer, so I've been a fitness coach slash personal trainer for 13 years. And when I was first coming up, I was doing a lot of bikini competitions. So I was in, on stage, almost naked, <laughs> whatever, five inch heels, like ridiculous, right? And because of the intense nature of the training and the prep for these shows, my weight was fluctuating all over the place. So there would be times, and what I didn't know at the time, because I didn't know enough yet, was that I was affecting my kidneys, I was affecting my um, metabolism. And uh, my adrenal glands were getting a run for their money, let's just say. <laughs> so my, my weight was like fluctuating. And um, sometimes I would be really embarrassed because as a trainer, I would have more weight on me than I thought was permissible. And people wouldn't take me seriously. And people wouldn't think that um, I knew what I was talking about or I could get them the body that they wanted because... I was a little bit heavier than I was comfortable with at that time. And I remember a specific example um, when I had tr transitioned into owning my own business and I was doing in-home training, I would um, go into people's homes. This was in New Jersey. And I was carrying my equipment into this one couple's house. And the husband wanted to train first. 
And he said to me, he was just, he was going on and on about, you know, the way that he goes about choosing a trainer and what trainers he thinks know what they're talking about and which ones don't. And he pointed to me and he said, if you were even five pounds heavier than what you are right now, you would not be fit to be my trainer. I would not hire you. I would not give you my money. And so, <laughs> so of course I internalized that. <laughs> yeah, of course I internalized that. And I was like, okay, like, and, and silly me at the time, I was like, well, you must be right. I must, you know, not be smart enough to train this guy if I am five pounds heavier. <laughs> I know, I know. I was in my 20s and I just, yeah. So. Oh my God. Yes. So you start to think about your body. If you're in the fitness industry, you start to think about your body as more of this like sculpture to be molded or this objective project or like just like if you're an architect and you're working with a blueprint, that's what your body becomes. Or if you are, um, you know, I don't know, a plumber and you're working on a toilet like that's your body is the project. It's not, toilet's probably not the right. <laughs> I'm trying to think of like um, no, it if you're a writer and you're working on a book, right? The book is your body. <laughs> it's the piece yeah. that you're working on. Yeah. So you, you try to distance yourself from it. But the the thing that happens that I didn't know as it was happening was that I was becoming very disconnected from my body, you know? Um, wow. But it was a way of protecting myself from all the criticism. You know, when you're on stage and there's these sorry, but like oftentimes overweight judges, you know, male judges judging your body head to toe and giving you brutal feedback, the yeah. way that you kind of can stay like sane and not get really, really depressed is just by saying, okay, this is just feedback. Like this is just a project and I have to whittle this and I have to shape this. And I'm talking like oh. there's too much fat right here, you know, or there's too much yeah. bloat right here. So Anyway, <laughs> that's kind of wow. Like, yeah, and the, so right now, like what you're bringing my awareness to is that you're experiencing both, right? Because you are fit, and you may not even realize that you are experiencing fit shame because because no one's going to come out to you in your face necessarily and say these things is like. I mean, maybe there are people like, I mean, you did tell me a story of a guy who just said that he wouldn't pay you because you'd be, you know, if you were 10 pounds heavier, like Five. he wouldn't, Five. <laughs> you wouldn't be of, then you wouldn't be of value to him. Yeah. Right. Like, so obviously there are people who just say things, um, but you're really walking on this, this line of fat shaming and fit shaming like you're really you're really experiencing both you've experienced both think, that. think about that yeah wow that's crazy yeah and you know things are always a mirror as well right so i was talking with a girlfriend of mine who's very fit too and she um in her past she she worked through an eating disorder and it was it was pretty detrimental to her health at one point but now she's doing a lot better thank goodness um, and it's so funny watching who gets triggered more by one or the other, like the fit, the fit shaming is like the fit people get more triggered by the fit shaming. Right. And then the fat shaming yeah. may be more triggering to those who have had a perception of themselves as being overweight or have been bullied by that in the past. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that you'll be affected by it if you are identifying yourself as fit or as fat, right? Because like, this is kind of part of this like body image. Like, what are you, what is your identifier? Like, what is it that you, because we've been talking, you kind of touched on it in the beginning and I'm not sure if I'm like steering this off into the other direction. Steer it, but girl, steer it. <laughs> and you can stop. Stop me at any time. No, I love it. Um, but this, okay, so you're a identifier, right? Like, how do, you, how do you see yourself? Like, are you, do you feel like you're overweight? Do you feel like you're fit? Do you feel like neutral? And how you identify is how you're going to take on 
these judgments and these assumptions. Because if somebody said that I was overweight, I would give it a lot of thought. That's not how I identify myself. Right. That's not what I think about myself. Right. Um, and I think that's so important when we're talking about um, the body that we desire or the body that we that we like connect with on a soul level like I think that it's when I've been thinking a lot about this topic in terms of manifestation Mm. and we hold ourselves back from the desire that we want because we feel like it's not possible for us or we feel like um I think that's probably the biggest one. It's like, we feel like it's not possible for us. Um, And we hold ourselves back from the desire and we make it, we make our world safe. And that is where I would be like questioning, okay, ask yourself, like, what do you actually want? Because if it is the fact, if it is a fact for you that it's, you're super comfortable with the body that you have and you love your body and you just like, there's, you practice so much self-love for your body. You're, you're good, right? There's no ideal that you need to subscribe to, but if you're finding yourself like teeter tottering with like, I don't know if I want this, I don't know. Like then it's like, ask yourself what it is that you actually desire. Like what is your, soul desire for your body yeah that's so good I love that um and yeah I think that big indicators to what you want and what you fear are both within you right and and what, what I yeah what I mean by that is sometimes the fit people have an inner fat shamer you know that's that's used to police yeah. us yeah. right and sometimes yeah. the overweight people have an inner fit shamer and i think yeah i think i have to give more background on like what a fit shamer could look like i noticed one thing um we may have touched on this in our last conversation but oftentimes fit people are taken for their physical uh, physical appearance as people who can't be deep they can't be spiritual um, they can't have other um, pursuits, other um, interests, and that comes from a that comes from a logical place. Like because if you only think a fit person got that way because they're spending a ton of time counting macros, hanging out on the stair climber, um, talking about their body, looking in the mirror, taking selfies, <laughs> um, and what have you, and keeping a journal of every single weight that they've ever lifted. That makes sense. You probably, if you also have a nine to five and a family, like probably don't have time for too much else. But that's where knowledge can really have a lot of power because it's like helping people become more more knowledgeable about what sustainable fitness is. And in my opinion, sustainable fitness, it does not equal um, fitness that requires a ton of discipline. What requires a ton of discipline is not necessarily sustainable. Pleasure equals sustainability. So if you're really enjoying the the type of fitness um, experiences that you engage in, and if your if your body also feels safe while doing those, then the pleasure will continue. Like the body will permit you to continue doing that thing because it knows it's safe doing it. But if you're doing an internal beat up and fat shaming all the live long day while you're macro counting and all the other things. Other people are correct. There isn't enough mental space to also think about spirituality, to also have other intellectual pursuits, because the whole time you're in your head yelling at yourself that you could get, you could gain weight if you don't do this, count this macro and do all these things. Yeah, that was awesome. (laughs) I love that. I'm like eating up everything. I think my eyes were like saucers. I was like, (laughs) that was so good. And that's so helpful because so many people start their their body journey with the idea of with hate, oh. hate for for change, right? Shame and hate to change my body. Yes, like in order for me to ch- to have that desire that I want, I need to hate. I need to come from a place of hate because that'll be enough motivation for me to change. Where you're saying, 
pleasure, 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 pleasure. Like it's moving, moving towards love for your body, moving towards this lovely, delicious place that you know is in your, is in your heart and in your body. Like it's just a place, you know, that you're supposed to live. Yes. Going there instead of like, that is your motivation. Yeah. Rather than I hate the way I look and like this is why I need to change and this will be my motivation. Yeah. And think about what you're saying there, that paradigm shift. That is so crucial. I love that. Somebody who's coming from that place, let's say someone has some weight that they want to lose and they start to think about embarking on a fitness journey and they hate their body and they're they're motivating themselves in that very, very negative way, which is reinforced by society. The you don't get the ass you want by sitting on it, the revenge body. A revenge body means you're starting to get a fit body from a negative place. I'm going to get revenge to get this fit body. Um, Nike, just do it. Ignore your feelings. Just do it. You know. So I understand where this is coming from. But if someone has no other paradigm, no other context, they don't understand and they don't believe that a fit person can be fit and be in love with their body and and enjoying and having pleasure because they only know what it's like to hate their body to motivate to get there. So when they see the person that's already lost the weight, they think they must hate their body times 20 because if I'm here hating my body, they must really hate themselves to stay that fit, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's not something that like that you want to su- subscribe to either, right? You're so like, in order for me to get there, I have to hate myself. I don't want to do that. that. Exactly. So, and but yet it's still a desire of yours, right? Exactly. It may still be a desire of yours is to, to, to be fit, but you won't let yourself because you're like, if I have to become a person who hates themselves, I don't want it. Yeah. And then I think that I speak another language sometimes or that it sounds that way when I'm like, no, it is your birthright to enjoy your body and to be fit and healthy. People are like, wait, you can have all everything? You can have it all? <laughs> Not only can you have it all, it is your birthright to have it all. You're supposed to have it all. <laughs> I love this so much. <laughs> it's so good because like, okay, so for our manifestation journey, right? Mm-hmm. Like this the concept to me, it's so similar to hating wealthy people, but also wanting wealth for yourself. Totally. Right. And it's like, you can't, that you're always pushing it at a distance. You're always pushing it away. If you're like, wealthy people suck. They don't want good for the world, blah, blah, blah. The story that we, that we hear, but also I really want to be wealthy. I really want to be able to have freedom, to have financial freedom, to do everything that I want. And so I feel the exact same thing with fit shaming. It's like they hate their bodies. I don't want to, I don't want anything to do with that, but I also want to have a fit body. Like it's so And like, where does that leave you? Like, it doesn't give you any direction. You just stay still. Yes. That it causes that separation of the us versus them. And then it just keeps you from everything you want. A hundred percent. Because if it's always an us, them, if it's always a them over there, your brain will think, well, then I can't possibly understand that because I'm not a them. I'm not a them. I can't jump to that side because I've told myself I can't because I told myself I'm not like them. Therefore, I can't have what they have. So I'm not even going to begin to think of the how because it's not yeah. in the cards for me. Yeah. But it is. It's not only, it, it's, it was what was meant for you when you were born. Like you were supposed to have this and you can still have it. <laughs> oh, that's so bad. <laughs> oh, okay. Let me see. Why are these so detrimental to everyone involved? Okay, so we've we've obviously gotten into this, which is great. Like it's detrimental for well, let's break it down. Like let's get um, you know, detailed. It's detrimental for the fit shamer to fit shame because it keeps them from their goal of becoming fit. We can yeah. outline that. Beautiful. Um, it's detrimental to the fat shamer. Okay, this one's a little more complicated. It's detrimental to the fat shamer. Well, I'll say, first of all, because if you look at someone and you judge them on their weight, then you're missing out on a potentially incredible friendship. You're missing out on that person teaching you something that, I mean, what uh, I just said this in my last masterclass. I feel like I keep repeating myself, but Abraham Lincoln, I think, said, 
everyone is my superior in some way. Like everybody knows how to do something better than you. And everyone's yeah. got like some juice. Everyone's got like some cool stuff that they've learned in life. And mm-hmm. you're, you're depriving yourself of that if you just judge a book by its cover. Yeah. I really agree with this because I was having a hard time with this one too. But I think that like for the fat shamer, it's, um, I need to be, I need to be viewed as superior. I need to be held like an us versus them, right? Like I need to hold myself higher than this person because I don't want to be associated with this person. So like to your point, exactly. Mm -hmm. When you're doing that, you're depriving yourself of that experience of that person Mm -hmm. who has so much to offer Mm -hmm. and it's almost like it's it kind of it's like irking me right now like it's frustrating that that would prevent you from experiencing what that person has to offer because that obviously would benefit you in so many ways like you're depriving yourself 100 percent. yeah i do remember I never was fat shaming anyone, but I, before fit shaming was a term, I'm just, just like literally just coming like, oh yeah, that was fit. It's not even fit shaming. It was like the person was fit shaming themselves. Let me back up. So I remember I would notice something when I was like in college, where if I hung out with women who, um, and not, and not all women, like my best friend um, was always trying to lose weight and she never ever put herself down like she never verbalized anything about the way she felt about her body and it was awesome she's very confident but I remember tr- trying to hang out with women who considered themselves overweight thought that they weren't as fit th- as me or whatever and I remember spending the whole because I'm so sensitive to I'm such an empath and I'm so sensitive to the way other people are feeling I remember listening to them run themselves down the whole night compare my body to theirs, constantly talk about how I could wear a belly shirt and they couldn't. And, oh, you, you, you think that it's like, what would it be like? Oh, you can drink this sugary drink because nothing, you know, nothing matters for you. Cause you're just going to stay that size, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then being, you know, 18, 19, 20, and just saying, well, I don't really want to hang out with women like this anymore. So, so maybe I did judge the book a little bit by its cover. So I'm talking about the systemic stuff. Maybe I did say, okay, well, I'm going to go find girls that look more like me because then I won't have to hear this shit all night, you know? And that wasn't true in every yeah. case. But, um, or I remember being at the gym in college and I remember being on the track running and having heavier women holler at me and like insult me because I was just, I don't know, I was in shape and I was running and they they said whatever they said because I guess that's how they felt about themselves. So it's like they were fit shaming themselves and I just wanted them to see, cause I saw the beauty. I saw like how beautiful they were with their curves, with whatever. I didn't think, I didn't think what they were thinking about themselves of them, but it was mm. almost like they were so bristly that I couldn't get in to love them because they weren't, they didn't believe that they deserved I don't know, like the the company of a fitter person or something. I don't know. Well, and also something that we haven't mentioned too is that both fit shaming and fat shaming, it actually brings connection to people too, right? So like when you can build a community around like, <laughs> so it's going to be like really black and white just for yeah. the purposes of explaining, but it's like, we're the fit shamers. So we get together and in this space, in this container, it's okay to have conversations about how fit people are obsessed with their bodies. Yeah. It's okay. And, and when we do that, we get a sense of belonging. Mm-hmm. We get a sense of community and be like, it's safe for me to be this way. It's safe for me to feel this way. I can do this with a community. I feel safe here. Right. So, and this same thing for fat shaming as well. Yeah. Like, we're, we're building communities within our insecurities to make ourselves feel better Yeah, <laughs> about where we are and how we felt, right? If we yeah. can come together in, in the pursuit of suffering together, like that makes us feel like we belong. Yes. We belong in suffering. Yes. And then like this nucleus forms where all these people are kind of stuck in their own prisons, like the self-created prison of being fit, but doing it like we talked about, not in a pleasurable way, but in the fat, the inner fat shaming way. 
And then everybody, every fit person in that nucleus, every fit person's inner fat shamer will help police all the others. So everyone stays fit because they're like, oh, no, no, don't remember. You can't have that. You have to have the low fat version. Oh, yeah. Thanks, girl. Thanks for reminding me. I don't want to become fat. You know what I mean? So it's like doing it from that space instead of a space of like, let's enjoy our lives and treat our bodies with respect and love and care. But no, it's like, oh my gosh, if I gain two pounds, I won't be sexy anymore and no man will want me type of thing. That's just as an example of a painful way to stay fit. Yeah. And like, you know, wouldn't it be nice if it was the other way around? (laughs) Like if it was that we were supporting each other? Wouldn't that be awesome? (laughs) Like, that'd be so awesome if it was just like, you know, hey, Leanne, I, you know, I was just on my way to your house and I was like, you know what would be great for Leanne right now is a, like, really, really, really good healthy smoothie or something, right? And it's just purely because I love you and I want to, I just want to, like, perpetuate your healthy body, right? So, like, if I had somebody come over and be like this is like so good for you i know it's just gonna like light you up and like this this is in sync with your values this is in sync with how you feel about yourself and i know that this is gonna make you feel amazing right like it's just wouldn't that be awesome wouldn't that be awesome if we just kind of supported each other and just held each other up instead of trying it's almost like we're trying to pull each other down because of our inadequacies, it's like if I pull them down, maybe they'd be more, we'd be more equal. I wouldn't feel so inferior, yes. right? Or yes. vice versa, I could feel more superior, right? Yes. Depending on what direction you're going in. Yeah. But yeah, like that would be so amazing if we yeah. could support each other more. So let's spin this around because I think this is a good segue. Let's spin this around and talk about what are the potential fears of things that can happen when someone makes us takes a stand and decides to stop the fit shaming or stop the fat shaming or I'll even tag on to that like when someone was let's say someone was a classic fit shamer and then they decide I'm going to stop fit shaming and I I'm going to become fit I'm going to take the leap of faith and start to head in this direction what are the potential pitfalls or dangers that they could run into from their peers Oh my gosh. Well, you're leaving their community. You're leaving that, that safe community, right? It's been safe to, to embody that version of yourself. Mm -hmm. Now you're leaving that. So there'd be a lot of insecurity and a lot of feeling like you're not safe or that you'd be lonely because you're not, you're not identifying with that community anymore and then I think in part that is you're losing the your identity yes how you view yourself what you like this is so this is so important because our identity helps us navigate through the world what do you eat what do you do where do you be what do you read who do you speak to like it consumes you so if you're starting to like say I'm gonna change I'm going to change this version of myself. I'm going to change my identity. Yes. That's scary yes. if you're leaving communities behind yes. and you're leaving support systems. Yes. Like, Oh my God. That's, this is so good. This is why so many people go back or never start in the first place because we are so tribal, right? Human beings need tribe and you're leaving the safe tribe but you don't quite have the yeah. self-esteem yet to think you really belong in the fit tribe. Cause you're like, I'm still 20 pounds away. And you're, even though you don't, you totally belong, but like you still think maybe because of the way we look or whatever, we're not ready yet for tribe number two, but now we're without tribe. This makes so much sense. Why so many are just like, this is too tough. I can't do this. I quit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I mean like in an ideal world, we wouldn't be doing this, right? We wouldn't be like making ourselves feel safe by putting ourselves into these boxes. Like we would just be accepting of everybody and everybody's body type. So I guess like a, like it kind of sucks Mm -hmm. that that's like a part of the journey, Mm -hmm. but here's one thing about um, manifestation 
or law of attraction is that, that when you do raise your vibration and that's what you would be doing if you are called to your healthy fit life something that you actually really deeply desire mm-hmm. when you're doing that you are going to raise your vibration and the people in your life will you may be surprised on who rises with you mm-hmm. like it might be that they're they're they were in that tribe with you of fit shaming or fat shaming, but now they're starting to they're recognizing what you're doing and they're like, she's on to something. I want I'm inspired, I'm gonna do that too. So we might believe that the people that are in our communities are, are going to exclude us or are going to ostracize us. But really what could happen is that all or some of those members actually rise with you. Yes. So like there's fear of rejection may not even be there. Yes. I know that with the law of attraction with energetics, when we rise, people also rise with us. Yes. You're permissioning for them. And that's yeah. so beautiful. It's like one person oh, just has to go that's... first. Yeah. So one person has yeah. to be the brave one. Yeah. Um, and take and, and yeah. let's talk about tribe in a different way. Um, family, how what is the one of the most connecting, most bonding experiences as humans? Food, <laughs> right? Yeah. So being really yeah. grounded in who we are. Both if you're talking fat shaming or fit shaming, if you really know who you are, not this meat suit, but what's beneath it. And you know that, like, if you put lasagna in your mouth tonight, spam. Do people still eat spam? I don't know. <laughs> or, like, or, like, a banana. Whatever. It doesn't, like, who you are is truly who you are, your essence. And it has nothing to do with that, you know? Um, yeah, but it can be vi- that, that this is something I go over in Module 10 of L3 Method is um uh, family and social social situation social pressure because it's real it's yeah. real when you're starting something new what were you gonna say no i was just gonna say that it's huge yeah it's like a huge what we're talking about here is a cultural reality yeah. right so this is like group practice so the social component of your body is so real. Yeah, it totally is. And you can get teased at first because, again, people just, if they're not in a place of knowledge and they they are mm-hmm. new to your boundary, you can get some teasing. You can get some, like, pushback. Like, oh, you're going to go work out again? Didn't you just do that yesterday? Don't you want to sit here and watch TV with us? Or, oh, you're going to order the pizza without cheese? Like, that's so boring. Come on, just eat like a normal pizza with me tonight. Come on, let's just cozy up in, you know, on the couch and watch this movie. Like, why do you have to be so difficult and order a whole separate pizza? You know, this is the real stuff that people yeah. deal with. Yeah. And so being grounded yeah. in who you are and it's, it's tough. I'm not saying it's going to be easy to like, to exercise that boundary in a loving, compassionate, non-judgmental way. Cause sometimes the, I, sometimes the easy thing to do is just project back, just like, you know, say something insulting back to them when you're just, cause you're trying so hard to like have this healthier way of life. And someone's, yeah. someone you love is trying to get in your way. And it's so, it takes a lot of patience. Yeah. Yeah. Or just give up because it's too much work mm-hmm. to fight against it. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Something I'll say to my clients is like, and tell me how this lands for you, Samantha. Tell me if this is too heavy or like, I would love your honest, brutal truth. I'll say like, I'll remind my clients, remember what you put in your body is such a deeply, deeply personal thing. And oftentimes with women, especially we'll have a, a certain protector. That's the people pleaser and the people pleaser will do subtle self-sabotage and eat the thing that isn't on their plan, isn't what they really want to eat, but they'll do that because they don't want to hurt grandma's feelings or they just want to keep their, their family happy and they're too tired to fight back. So 
they'll eat the thing. Yeah. It'll go in their body and then it will become, it'll turn into cells that they walk around with for the next seven years. So it's like, I just, I say this to remind people like, this is a sacred decision and it's only yours to make. And nobody else gets to, to decide what you put in your body. That's so deeply personal. How does that come across yeah. to you? Is that too harsh? No, I think that's an amazing way of looking at it. Like, if, I, I mean, kind of right from the start when it's like, I'm choosing this because it makes my body feel good, right? Like, that's why I'm doing it. And I feel like that if I received that answer from somebody, like if I was accusing somebody <laughs> of uh, not eating what I was eating, um, it sounds so ridiculous, but <laughs> and they, but they responded with, um, my body, this is what my body is asking for. This is what my body feels is right for me. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, oh, that's awesome. Like, I, I love that. Yeah. Like, that's what I, I want to do that now. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, like, that's it. inspiring. Yes. Sam, this is awesome. I'm going to like, yeah. can I, can I grab hold of that? Oh, I want everyone yeah. to know that. I'm eating this because this is what yeah. feels good for my body. Are you like, how are you going to like push back when someone says that? They're gonna be like, Oh, well maybe I want to try that. <laughs> like, like nobody can say anything about that. It's, it's my, my body is wanting this. Like we have a, um, a family member who is allergic to gluten and like severe allergy to gluten. Right. So the whole house has this understanding and we're like, you know, I'll eat gluten. But anything that we make for this person doesn't have any gluten in it or we're just like sensitive to his body's needs, right? We're not like, oh, you should just do it. Don't worry about it. Like, we're not saying any of that. We're like, you need to take care of your body and how can we support you in doing that? Like, that's just like a small example. But I think like, and it's so funny, it's only when somebody has an allergy that you take this stuff seriously, right? But it's like our our response to our food and our environment is the same thing because anything that you put in your body can make your body flare up or make your body have a reaction. It doesn't have to be an allergy. It's just like my body's not responding to this very well. I need to take a break from this or whatever it is. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Um, there was another thing I was going to say, but I forget what it was, but yeah, I think that that's, I think that that's brilliant. Like, Oh, I know what it was. The way that you feel about your body is nobody's business. Like, it really isn't. It's your body. So I just, I really feel like it's important for people to, to like lean in and sink in to what it is that their body wants to be, you know, like, they're not denying themselves the pleasure of their own bodies. Like they feel and express and like they soulfully feel the pleasure of their bodies and how that looks for them is nobody's business. It's just, it's their sacred connection to their own body. So whatever it looks like for that person is their, it's their life. It's, their business nobody there's nobody should have any comments or decisions about it like oh my god it's so good yeah can I take that a step further also it's no one else's yeah. business what you know what what we want our body to look like feel like etc perform like and what we decided about our bodies last year last month last week doesn't have to be what we decide today tomorrow we have the power to I change love- our decision it's just like metabolism good thank you yeah um the biggest one of the biggest mistakes in the fitness industry is the assumption of metabolism being static so you'll mm. see that show up on treadmills when you like hold on to the like sensors and it tells you your body fat percentage or like how many calories you're burning um not that body fat that's something different but like calories burned and Um, there's no way of knowing that based on just a cursory understanding of the person's stats. Not only is your metabolism different from my metabolism, 
your metabolism is different from your own metabolism last month. Like <laughs> your metabolism, our metabolism is different when we are going through our menstrual cycle versus when we're not. Like it's always yeah. different. It's so dynamic. And so we get to have new beliefs about our bodies whenever it serves us. Yes. As we learn more information, we can make a different decision. Yeah. I had a client. <laughs> oh, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, I just keep going. <laughs> um, I was going to say, I had a client. She was such a beautiful soul. And she was having a lot of resistance to um, doing doing things. Like she had a lot of resistance to getting consistent with her exercise. She was having a lot of resistance. So like she would kind of just ebb and flow and go back and forth between eating healthy and then just like throwing it all by the wayside and then going back and whatever. So the problems are the problem, right? Like my coaching calls about my fitness coaching calls are never about fitness. It's always about like childhood trauma. You know, it's, it's very important to be trauma informed if you're in this line of work. Um, it's about, uh, you know, that ex-boyfriend that one time that told you that your legs look like cottage cheese and it stuck with you. And now you have a major complex. Like it's never about like the exercise or the food, food and body are the innocent bystanders. Just like you said, with wealth, like money is just another innocent bystander that people take their, their, uh, wounds out on that, that are going to be in front of them to be healed. So this beautiful woman finally got to the root of the issue after we did so much work around it and realized the resistance was coming from an identity piece where she growing up and then on into adulthood was known as like the quirky, cute, chubby girl. Like she was like this quirky, like she had this interesting style about her. And part of that, she realized like, integral part of that was like her weight. Like she had, she in her own mind had decided unconsciously, I have to be chubby to be this like stylish, quirky, like interesting person. To be loved by her people. I have to be this way to be loved. Yeah. Yeah. So how interesting was it that then she got to make a decision like, well, can I be quirky and be a little thinner if I want to be whatever I want. Can I be stylish and be like a different weight? Can I still be loved even if I'm like not super overweight and prone to type two diabetes like my mom, you know? Uh -huh. Wow. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Cause it is going to change. We're yeah. evolving, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to change. Like, it doesn't have to, you don't have to commit to this one identity of yourself. You get to choose what you want next, yeah. what you want to experience next. Yeah. yeah, totally. And I love how you touched on um, being, being like growing into your body, um, learning about your body, because that's part of being healthy, right? It's just learning more about this physiology. That can be a deeply spiritual experience. You know, um, we're, we're spiritual beings, but we are in a three-dimensional body. Um, yeah. But connecting back in the very chakras, the very seven energy wheels of your mm -hmm. energetic system are rooted in your physical body. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm so happy. I feel like I could, I just started getting into chakra work oh, cool. within the last, since like the new year, I'd say whoa, like, whoa, like, it's amazing, it's amazing to tap into that energy within your body, and to listen to what your body has to say, like, to act, to learn how to listen, like, that's another thing, right, like, mm -hmm. what do you mean, what does my body have to say, like, it's not talking, but it's, like, <laughs> yeah, it is, like, if, if you sit silently with practice to ask yourself questions, or to actually even just feel sensations in your body, where they are, um, it can be quite telling what yes. needs to be healed. Yes. What needs to be, what, what light, what, where the light needs to shine, right? Like where you're feeling like heavy or blocked and in pain. It's like, there's healing that needs to take place there. And how can we kind of like break that open and let the light kind of shine through it, radiate through it? Yeah. And then notice 
Totally. And then noticing where one chakra becomes blocked, another chakra will then inevitably have to become a little overactive to make up for the blocked. And we're yeah. often do, we're the ones doing the blocking because, like you said, we're trying to just receive love. We're trying to stay safe. And yeah. somewhere along the way, we thought that was the way to do it. And yeah. 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 Wow. That's so cool. Wow. Uh, what was it? Oh, I just read it. It was um, resisting your life is stress in your body. Mm -hmm. So, like, resisting your resisting your experience in the present moment is adding stress in your body or like what you resist persist. Yes. And I feel like we can see that happening in our bodies. Right. And we can mm -hmm. feel that happening in our bodies, mm -hmm. which gives so many clues to the path that we are meant to go on, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like, and so let's circle back to like our topic resistance showing up as fit shaming can look like like maybe so if we believe in destiny and we believe in having a path right um and this is the next stage of our evolution is to to start to care more for our bodies and become healthier and pay attention to what our bodies are doing for and asking for um and we resist it because up here we're believing things about fit people still right that can yeah. be like one example of resistance for this topic for fat shaming resistance could look like um okay let's say there's can i give can i kind of go off the cuff here yeah okay thanks um with fat shaming let's say someone has become fit and they had a lot they had to do a lot to overcome maybe familial ties maybe they come from an unhealthy family and they really had to do a lot of work to scrape and claw and get to where they are, which is the weight they want to be, you know, the health, the whatever. And they aren't truly uh, like confident in their ability to stay fit. They got there, but to sustain it, they're not, they're not a thousand percent sure. Like I got this. So they have resistance to certain things like going to a family gathering hanging out with their old friends, being around food that they're like scared to like eat. And so yeah. that resistance can block the heart chakra because then you're not connecting with your loved ones because of perceived threats. You know? Right. So again, yeah. that really being rooted in who you are, your essence, like you yeah. know who you are, you know, you got this. And yeah. worst case scenario, you have an all out night at a buffet and go nuts. <laughs> who cares? Wake up yeah. the next day and go back to your game plan. Yeah. Whatever. It's a, I've had this practice given um, with the shockers and everything. I have this practice. I'm just learning it. But it's anything that I put into my body, it nourishes me. So instead of it being like, this is um, like mindless or like not maybe like just purely pleasure focused or mindless. I feel like that's where I've been having trouble, not consciously thinking about what I'm putting into my body, yes. but I've kind of taken this understanding that if I'm putting things into my body and I'm of the understanding that this is going to provide me with nourishment, my body is going to receive it well. Like my body will be well. If it's like, mm -hmm. I am t I am I am somebody who takes care of my body. I am somebody who identifies with a healthy body, yes. and therefore I do put things in my body that nourishes me, yes. and I can feel like the difference in even the experience of digesting that or bringing it into my body. I can feel the difference between a mindless whatever and a this is going to nourish my body. It feels so much better in my body and like all of that chatter that goes on in my mind like was that a good decision I don't know it's like no I made the decision before I put it in my body that it was going to nourish me so I've already checked that off I don't have to think about it anymore yes. I've made the intention that I am a person who takes care of my body yes it wouldn't have gone in if I didn't do it 1000 percent. and now I love what you said and let's take what you said and translate it from the energetic 
slash emotional slash mental into the actual physiologic physiological processes that you cause to happen by doing that work in the beginning. This is what's so good is that now you've put your body from a state of sympathetic, like for your nervous system into a parasympathetic state. So now because you're relaxed, quite Mm. literally that translates to lower levels of acidity, you know, higher levels of, of, of having an alkaline environment. So now your body feels safe to digest that food. Your body is breathing more deeply. What happens when you breathe deeply from your diaphragm? You're you're helping your lymph nodes pump. So that's going to mm-hmm. like translate to the whole body circulating better. And then that mm-hmm. nourishment goes where it needs to go. And the parts of the food that aren't good for you make their way out. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. So brilliant. Yeah. figured it out. <laughs> yeah. No, it's so, it's so true. Yeah. But that, I think like what we've been talking about in this master class is like these polarizing things and how they can be so divisive and like really pull us away from what it is like within ourselves and for the collective, but like bringing it back to like the wholeness of who we are and the concept of, of what our bodies are and what they are asking for and what they are needing, like the truth of that, like the real truth behind that and not getting so complicated with all of these ridiculous ideas and assumptions and getting confused by them. That was the biggest thing for me was this was confusing. Yes. Fit shaming, fat shaming, confusing. Like I don't, well, how do I be then? Yes. I can't be fit and I can't be fat. Am I okay here? Like it, you know, like I, it was so confusing. At least to a state of paralysis, right? Then people get stuck. Yep. So they can't move anywhere. Yep. Don't, right? There's no direction. Where's, what's my desire? Like there's nothing there. So I feel like in class, we've kind of talked about like, those are, these are two polarizing things, but if we bring it back to the the individual and what the individual desires and how they can process these really distracting thoughts and get sent back into taking care of their bodies. That's really the bottom line. Totally. And to notice, take emotional responsibility, like we talked about in the beginning of the call, and take a little bit of time to notice where these thoughts are really coming from. If you feel something come up within you that feels a bit systemic, that's of a fat shaming or a fit shaming quality that we didn't like go over here in this class, you can still figure this out on your own. Just take a moment and think, okay, if my protector's goals protect your ego, interchange role, there's many words. If it's, if it's their goal to keep me safe or to keep a flow of love coming towards me, then where could this potentially be coming from? So if like the fit shaming thought is, if I become fit, I'll become like mean girls. Yeah. Okay. okay. Self-responsibility, where did that come from? Well, when I was a little kid and I was a little bit chubby, there were mean girls really actually being mean girls to me. And I want to make sure that never happens again, because when I was my most vulnerable, when I was little and small and scared and my parents weren't around and 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 I was getting bullied and I had nowhere to turn to, that was so painful that I want to make sure it never happens again. So I will do anything I can to put blocks up from that happening to me. And so that this can be the manifestation of that. Yeah. I I better not become fit because I don't want to be like that. I don't want to inflict that pain on someone else. Right. Okay, now we've kind of figured out where that's coming from, and now we're not having a discussion about fitness. We're having a discussion about something else, and how beautiful is yeah. that? Versus yeah. on, on the other end, um, I'm trying to think of an example with, with fat shaming. Um, can you think of one? <laughs> I can think of ones of fat shaming within myself, but like yeah. outward fat shaming. Um I remember, I don't, it's, it's weird, eh, when you're trying to, like, flip it around. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was young, I, so I was really, really, and this is actually kind of hard to talk about, because talking about being really thin, I feel like you don't get a lot of sympathy for 
right? People are just like, oh, poor you. Mm -hmm. Um, That's been my experience. So I was really thin when I was young. And I remember um, I was wearing these tights. So my, my legs were like, you know, I was, I was wearing tights. So you could clearly see the definition of my legs. And I was really young. Like I was like, uh, I feel like I was like in grade two or something. Like I was like really young. And I was on the, the playground and this girl came up to me and she was just like, my mom said that you are so skinny. You're so skinny. And it was like, they were both sharing this exchange that, and she was like, she was bigger than me. So she was like saying that I was way, like I was way too thin. And like, I would get that a lot when I was young. Like I would get that, like, you're not eating enough. You're not eating enough. And I was just like, I'm not, (laughs) I'm not hungry I'm like not interested in food it's not because I have a problem with my appearance or I'm trying to to do anything I just this is just the way that I look like I don't know right and it doesn't say anything about you right and that's how it was interpreted people were like you can't be this thin on purpose yep there's an (laughs) assumption yeah and I'm like I'm just being me I don't you know totally but it was like a prop it was a problem to be to be that thin. It was, was I wasn't okay. I wasn't accepted. Like yes. I wasn't allowed to yes. be thin. You know. Yeah. It was just. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that's like that's, goes with what you're looking for. No, that's fabulous. It's such a perfect example of of people doing the best they can. Um, people in a. Uh, superior dominant guardian style position like parents like teachers in their own way trying to like show love keep you safe whatever but like just doing it from such a place of ignorance when they're not a doctor when they don't have the beginning of an understanding of your life they've never like even gone home after school and you know watch what you eat next or like watch what you had for breakfast like they literally have no clue what they're talking about, but then they're just throwing these statements around in front of their kids and teaching them how to talk about other people behind their back and their bodies. Yeah. Yeah. And I obviously see that as right now, like it was a place of ignorance, right? And like, it would be common, like, uh, how are you going to get married if you're this thin? Like, how are we going to, right? Like, it was like, how are you, how, like, you're too thin to be, be loved to be like to have people accept you wow Wow. (laughs) yeah it's crazy i i I remember having a guy friend reminding me i had a a wonderful guy friend he's like a brother to me and he has a beautiful girlfriend it might be engaged now i don't know beautiful girlfriend and um don't want to give like information about this person away so basically like in his culture um i guess bigger women are more Um, are oftentimes much more valued and much more like attractive to them. So he went to all of his like uncles and cousins and I want to say brothers, like the men in his family and showed them pictures of his new girlfriend when he first started dating this woman who was very, very thin. And they all were just like, she's so thin. She's so thin. Like, how could you be attracted to her? She's skin and bones. Like she's not, she doesn't have any like curves with blah, 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 blah. And yeah. up until he met this woman, he always automatically went with the tastes and the palates that his, I should say palates, it's weird, like talking about women like their food, sorry, but like always went like for the tastes of his, his male family members, like that was the type of woman he went after and he didn't question it until he saw this woman and her incredible beauty and was just instantly like magnetized to her. And then he questioned, like, well, wait a second, like, she's a woman, and she's a beautiful woman, and she looks very different from what we're typically attracted to in this family, but, like, I don't care. And to see their reaction, it was almost like they weren't happy for him, you know? Uh, Yeah. wild. Yeah. I know. It is. It prevents love. Yeah. 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 
So, and, and I, I, I completely, I feel it in my own system, as you say, like, um, a lot of people don't give sympathy to thin people who are, you know, whatever, discriminated against because they're thin. Like, okay, yeah. you know, that's like an eye roll. And I feel yeah. that, um, but it's also, it's very real. It's very yeah. real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, when I experienced that for the first time in my life, I experienced shame. You know, like, I experienced, I'm not right. I'm not okay. Like, there's something wrong with me, right? For something that you had no control over. Yeah. Wild. That's where, it, <laughs> right? Like we don't have sympathy for it, but I'm like, okay, well, that person feels like they don't belong, right? Yeah. Like that's a problem. Yeah. And so, yeah. Same, so I'm flipping it. I'll, I'll flip it really quick. It's the same as someone doing the fat shaming and yeah. looking at someone who they deem as fat and making all types of assumptions about them and the character and their character. When yeah. in reality, maybe they come from a part of the country or another country um, and a family where all they know, all they see, everything that's around them is like conducive to and promoting of an unhealthy, overweight lifestyle. Maybe they yeah. never have known. I mean, I've talked to people who have never eaten a vegetable. I've talked to people who never even knew that there was like a variety of fruit available. Uh, because they didn't they didn't know and so that's not something that was their fault this they were a child that was brought up in this uh, environment uh, yeah i think also it's probably important to, to mention like culturally how bodies are kind of built culturally yes. right so, like like we just kind of mentioned it before like when when you're saying that your friend they value like a woman who is curvier, like, and that's I think really important to to notice because <sighs> cultural values are a really difficult topic to speak on because they are they're such a core piece of a person's identity and like their community, and so in that way, I feel like there's a lot of respect that needs to kind of be involved with that like if it's something that oh my friend michelle just hopped on um, hi michelle hi michelle um so yeah i feel like i think that's important because i i just want to acknowledge the fact that i know that there are cultures who celebrate bodies and that is so amazing you know there are cultures who who demonize bodies and who like you know western culture who is who's demonizing right or really judging on appearance and there are some cultures thank goodness on our planet who like celebrate bodies right they really they really lean into the body as being this amazing temple and this sacred place that we get to like enjoy our lives in yes. so i feel like that's really important because i think maybe not an expert, but I'm thinking in that culture, there's just like this acceptance, right? There's just like this love and acceptance for all bodies. And like, they just see the value that each person brings, whatever their body type is, you know? Yes, exactly. I love what you just said. They bring value just with their body type, like whatever that gets to be for them. Yeah. I love that. And I want people to take that in as an individual. If you weren't born into a culture that, you know, if you weren't blessed in that way, um, on an individual level, remembering that your body is your asset for you here to do what you want with it. And we're not going to encourage you to like do drugs and mess around with it, but like, it's, it's your choice, you know? And, and, yep. and I just, I just want people to understand that whatever they identify with, the body can just be used as an extra enhancement to up their wattage, to optimize what they're here to do in this life and where they're, they're trying to go. If you're an architect, you can be a fit architect. If you're a, um, a zookeeper, you can be whatever you want with the body that you want. And that will just complement what you're doing. If you're, um, if you're a belly dancer, look however you want to look, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. if you're, you know, in corporate finance, 
And it's just whatever, and I don't mean to say that your career is your identity either. That's not what I mean, but like your dharma, your purpose in the world, if you're yeah. a mom and you want to be healthy, that's only going to help you be an, an even more incredible mom because then you'll get to run around after your kids and have more stamina. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's just it's just here to enhance whatever it is you're trying to do, not get in the way of it or be like an obstruction to your current parameters and your current identity. Yeah. Yeah, that's so brilliant. And I think for you, Leanne, like what you do is you are, you're really helping people get to that, that calling that they have, right? Like so the people that are, that work with you and, and that come to you, they have this calling to be, to be connected to that body that they know that they, that they're desiring and you are helping them get there whatever that looks like for them yeah and that is so brilliant mm, thank you so much i love yeah. that and i believe you guys are doing what you're doing with your podcast to help people understand the power of their they have manifestation power they have yeah. the ability to 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 sh like move their ship in whatever course and direction in their life that they want to we have so much more power than we think we do Absolutely. And your manifestation, your being like law of attraction, bringing in the money, the, abund the abundance, the wealth, or having and maintaining a fit body gets to just be like brushing your teeth. You get to create customized practices that are individualized, not just to you, but you in the current time, meaning like your manifestation practice could change in the future. Your meditation practice could change. It can always change, and that's okay. Like, you can go from wanting to rollerblade to wanting to pay, play tennis, and that's how you're going to stay fit. But just making it like a practice like brushing your teeth, it's neutral. It's not like, oh, my God, this is going to change who I am, and, like, I'm going to become, like, a mean person, or I'm going to become a shallow person, or I'm going to become a deep person. It doesn't change anything. It's just like, okay, I really want more money because it's going to help me amplify and do this in my life. Okay, I really want to be healthy for the long term because then I'll get to do this for a long time. Like, okay, I'm going to just do these things and then I get to have this, this epic life. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. So good. Ah, <sighs> okay. Any, any closing thoughts, anything else that. Uh, well, I just have to say thank you for uh, this. This is so lovely. I feel, I, I just feel like there's been so many aha moments in this and it was really nice to have this conversation. I've never had this conversation before. So mm. it was really good <laughs> to kind of like air it out and just speak for experience and a place of love and um, understanding. Yeah. That's my intention through this. So I just want to thank you so much for allowing me to come on with you because they, they, uh, I just, I got a lot out of it. <laughs> thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. No, that's it. I, I haven't, I've never had this conversation either. And I just appreciate you so much, Sam. And I just feel like you and I provided windows into each other's lives. And I'm, I'm forever grateful for that. Thank you. Bye, girl. All right. Well, I'll tag you so that people can find you and your podcast in the show notes, aka the, you know, <laughs> the little blurb below. And um, I'll yeah. do the same thing on the YouTube video. And okay, that's so great. <laughs> Thank you. You are ah. so welcome. Love you, girl. I'll see you soon. Bye, Leanne. Bye.